what brought you to the center? And um, I know you came from Utah for this. Why? Uh, how did you find Dr. Zavi, and what so, interested you in this procedure? I kept my cell phone next to my bed, and every time I woke up, I recorded the time, and I gave it to the doctor. And they said, "Well, you have very mild sleep apnea from our sleep study, and we, no med, no interventive measures are required." They told me I didn't really need anything, so I tried a sleep a CPAP machine. And once again, my sleep apnea was still pretty bad, and it didn't do anything. I, I never fell asleep even one time after using a CPAP for machine for a week. So I returned it, and I told my brother, and I, I said, this is pretty bad. So they, I went to Dr. Zaki. Uh, they were interns together. And uh, Dr. Zaki, I said, hey, I want a drug-induced sleep endoscopy. I did some research online and heard he can do this. And he said, okay, let me do some scope. And he saw my turbinates were very small. So he did some kind of turbinate reduction procedure. And I slept well for about two months until my throat started really giving bad. And I was waking up constantly. So then I talked to my brother again. I'm like, okay, this is really bad again. Now it's my throat. I only slept well for two months. And so I tried to find a way to get a drug in your sleep endoscopy. I called law hospitals. Most of them didn't even know what it was. They never heard of it. So finally, I was able to uh, get here at Dr. Zaki. I, I like can't stay awake at work. It's exhausting. This is sleep apnea, guys.
inside of the structure. Wow. Nasal pharyngeal. Maxilla. Try a jump thrust with your hands. Just How hard is it? So it's great that we're getting this information. Can you do the jump thrust? You should do that again so you can film his face. I saw a little bit. Okay, let's try the roll of Tell me, so um, you know your sleep study results don't really show how severe it is. Sleep endoscopy does. So tell us your perspective on all that. Do people believe you when you tell them how severe it is, or uh, I recorded on my phone. I was waking up 40 times an hour, and they didn't believe me. They said the sleep study showed 13 times. Yeah. And I said no. I am waking up 40 times. I have it on my phone every hour, every minute. I was waking up. And they don't believe me, they're like, no, it's very, it's very, uh, it's very not severe, it's very mild. Yeah. And I'm like, if I don't do the de elevation, the mouthpiece, yeah. the, the temperature, the ibuprofen, I will have the worst sleep. Yeah. I'm falling asleep at work, I just can't focus. It's like, yeah. it sucks. We see it, we yeah. see, we see how severe it is. So I think it's great that you came out here and you can allow us to do this. And allowed us to record it so that you know other people can learn, and that you know you can figure out, and show people what's going on because it's, it's pretty severe. I don't think anyone in this room will deny it that uh, what we saw was severe sleep apnea without question. Doesn't matter what the papers show. That was severe <coughs> sleep apnea that needs to be treated. Yeah. Okay. So glad. You're glad that you had it in a way? No, I'm glad someone believed me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. None of the doctors believe me. I'm like, this is severe. Um, no, I was just really impressed with the uh, amount of sleep apnea that he had. Uh, as an anesthesiologist, uh, we deal with sleep apnea all the time, and uh, this was was very different. It was uh, very dramatic and uh, unusual in a young person in his, in his body build. Dr. Martin Gorman, and I'm a dental sleep medicine physician, and uh, I was assisting Dr. Zygi with the DICE procedure in the fact we had a upper and lower tray that is actually on a slide. So as the patient goes to sleep, we can slide his mandible forward and take care of any tongue-based issues that are involved with the sleep apnea. And at first, by sliding a jaw forward, it really had a huge impact on um, Austin's condition. But as you went into a deeper sleep, you realized that it was also a palate and uh, a soft palate uvula issue blocking, and a pharyngeal issue blocking his airway. And dental oral appliances are mainly used for tongue-based issues by sliding the mandible forward, the tongue comes forward, and it opens up the airway. But Austin had a dual issue, and he really had severe apneic events once he went into a deep sleep, and then the pharynx and the, uh, and, and the soft palate came in and took over, and it, it really made the dental appliance much, much less ineffective. So that's why I was assisting to see where the issue was, and what me and myself as a dentist could do to help Austin with his sleep apnea. And we can have a small impact on him, but the major impact really is, has to be dealt with from a, probably a medical surgical venue. And um, that's the only way you can probably be helped permanently.